want to jump in right now to an issue, uh, of course, very much on the minds of people in Washington, immigration. And I want to ask you, are you a legalization? What's your position on that? Well, it's an interesting conversation they're having in Washington, D.C. What they have to focus on, uh, the American people don't trust Washington to secure the border. And, and I think that's the real issue. I'm not sure they can pass a piece of legislation uh, that uh, promises to secure the border uh, and does all these other things from the standpoint of uh, uh, legalizing individuals or, who are here and uh, modernizing the, uh, uh, the, the, the program that allows people to come into to the United States until they have shown Americans that they're serious about securing the border. I'll tell you an interesting thing. I've, as you shared in your opening remarks, I've been the governor of Texas for 12 and a half plus years and uh, 1,200 mile border with Mexico. Uh, Two thirds of the entire border so with Mexico is Texas. So what do you do? Do you, do you build a fence across the whole no, thing? No, but we, we have had real life experiences of surging into uh, areas, sectors of the border and shutting down the border from the standpoint of illegal activities. We know how to do this with boots on the ground, with technology, with aviation assets in the ground. We just don't have the, the dollars nor the resources to do it for that entire 1,200 mile border. And frankly, it's not Texas' responsibility. But interestingly, no one from Washington, not the administration, uh, no one from Congress, has ever really come and sat down with us and said, Governor, how would you secure the border? We'll be happy to share with them ideas that frankly work because we've done it real time. But until the border is secure, I don't think Americans are going to trust Washington to pass an immigration bill, no matter how good it sounds or how does, thoughtful it is until they get the border secure. Does that mean that you do not support the Senate, leg the Senate legislation? I, I, I don't support what's happening in Washington, D.C. Because the Senate they, legislation does have very significant, they say even before you can even start legalization, we have to stop 90 percent of the flow of illegals. I, I, a very tough bar I, I, benchmark I, I to cross. I understand that. But what we're hearing through all the fog is trust me. And the American people do not trust Washington because they have seen them time after time say, here's what we're going to do, here's what we're going to implement when it comes to the border of the United States and the border has never been secured. Secure the border first. I would suggest to you, you just come up with a piece of legislation that secures that border first. Let Americans see that you're serious about putting the security apparatuses and, and the type of you know, strategic fencing, the boots on the ground, the aviation assets, and then Americans will trust Washington that they're going to do what they say they're going to do. In the meantime, as that would be a difficult process to implement, what do you do with the 11 million or so folks that are here illegally but have jobs? Well, the same thing you've been doing with them for the last 40 years. Uh, is that, uh, but but we, is, is this a sustainable system that we have? No, it's not a sustainable system, but listen, the, uh, throwing these ideas at the wall until you secure the border, I will suggest to you, is just, it's, it's How a non-starter. How come? Because Americans don't trust Washington to secure the border. Again, until you get that border secure, Americans, by and large, are going to look at this and go, you know what, you've never done it before, so why should I trust you now? What about... I want to ask quickly high-skilled immigration, an interesting little tidbit. I'm rooting for the Spurs right now. You're a wise man. No one wants the Heat to win. But you look at the Spurs, they actually have six guys on the roster, Mono Ginobili, Tony Parker, Boris Dio, yeah. no, guys from New Zealand, Brazil, yeah. um, Australia we're, even. We're, we're a country there's no of restriction. Well, but there's no restriction, the point being for sports stars, there's really no restriction on high-skilled immigration. If we want to sign Mono, we make that possible, for instance. now. Why does it make sense uh, to have any restriction on, in particular, star scientists or, it or engineers? It why, why not? We should, we, that we should have a program made. where we actually are enticing the workers that we need to come into this country, but do it legally so we know who they are. And, and we don't have that type of a program. It is practically impossible to get into this country if you are a non-skilled worker. Well, listen, there's a lot of jobs out there for non-skilled workers. The state of Texas leads the nation in creation of jobs. 30% of all the jobs created in America in the last decade were in Texas. We need workers in the state of Texas. We're creating a lot of opportunity. 
But the issue is we have a federal policy in place that makes it almost impossible uh, for someone who doesn't have a particularly high skill, and even some of those individuals, it is a, it is a problem. So uh, I would suggest that Washington would be substantially further along if they would modernize the uh, immigration policies actually dealing with you know, so you H1NB. So you would favor, it, as part of a large immigration reform that does secure the borders, you do want to see more high-skilled immigration? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're a country of immigrants. We need to be reaching out to the individuals that we actually need and want in this country. But until you secure the border, Americans are not going to trust Washington to do what they say they're going to do because they've seen this movie before. What do you think about uh, folks who say that in 2012, one thing that hurt Republicans was that they ran to the right on immigration and maybe that th there's this huge swath of the population that is voting now on that issue of, interestingly, it, by 2016, Texas, I think, will be the first majority, minority state. That Whites will now be uh, just, correct. they're now slightly more than 50 percent. They'll be slightly less than 50 percent of the voting population. That is correct. Is that a losing issue for conservatives? Well, I think we have to lay out a vision for all Americans, regardless of whether you're Asian or African American or Hispanic or Anglo. And, and that vision is that uh, economics uh, and, and tax policy and regulatory policy and a legal system and a skilled workforce are all intertwined. And that's what uh, individuals look for. That's what Americans are looking for. Now, obviously, when you have candidates that are saying things like, we're going to self-deport, <laughs> uh, uh, that is a very caustic message. Uh, do we need to be a rule of law? Do we need to have policies in place? But I go back to people who are here, Americans who are here, who are United States citizens who have either gone through the process or are born here, but they're not Anglo, they're Hispanic, they're some other ethnic uh, ethnicity rather than, uh, than Anglo. They're going to be very sensitive to the language that they hear from whether it's Democrats or Republicans, but they heard a caustic message this last time, and I think when they heard self-deportation, they turned the Republican candidate off. A caustic message from, from the Republicans. Yes. What, I mean, what do you make of the way, it, it's interesting how it's, how it's shaping up now. You have your Texas colleague Ted Cruz on one end of the spectrum. You have potential 2016 candidate in Jeb Bush saying, and well, Marco Rubio's running even further to the left probably. Where do you think all that shakes out? Well, I think it shakes out to secure the border. I'm telling you. All of this is interesting conversation and, and, and good debate. But until you secure the border, you cannot have a legitimate conversation about what type of immigration policies you're going to put in place. So uh, I, I, think, I think, you know, and, and again, governors have to deal with these things. Senate, with all due respect, they debate a lot. Mm -hmm. We have to deal with it. I have dealt with it in Texas. I have to deal with the issue of young people in our state who came here by no fault of their own and how we're going to uh, manage them from an economic standpoint. The state of Texas made the decision over a decade ago that those individuals were going to pay full in-state tuition because we wanted them educated. We did not want them uh, to be wards of the state, if you mm -hmm. will, and on uh, government assistance programs if we could help it. And we've been fairly successful with that. I think that is a message that is very positive for the Republican Party, that there are governors out there who have dealt with this issue and dealt with it in a thoughtful way. And again, if they'll give me a call, I'll be more than happy to show them how to secure the border. And then they can get on with the uh, important issue of hand of putting immigration reform into place that will actually work.